वेलकम एवरी वन माई सेल्फ डेस मुंडे वर्किंग एज असिस्टंट प्रोफेसर इन द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ प्रोसेसिंग एंड फूड इंजीनियरिंग के के वा कॉलेज ऑफ एग्रीकल्चरल इंजीनियरिंग एंड टेक्नोलॉजी नासिक सो इन दिस वीडियो लेक्चर वी विल स्टडी द प्रोसेस फ्लो चार्ट फॉर मैन्युफैक्चरिंग ऑफ चीज सो इन प्रीवियस वीडियो लेक्चर्स वी कवर्ड बटर मैन्युफैक्चरिंग प्रोसेस देन बटर ऑयल मैन्युफैक्चरिंग प्रोसेस योगर्ट मैन्युफैक्चरिंग प्रोसेस पनीर मैन्युफैक्चरिंग प्रोसेस मिल्क पाउडर मैन्युफैक्चरिंग प्रोसेस एंड आइसक्रीम मैन्युफैक्चरिंग प्रोसेस सो द लास्ट डेरी प्रोडक्ट दैट इज वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी इज चीज सो डेफिनेशन ऑफ चीज चीज हैज बीन डिफाइन बाय डेविस एज अ प्रोडक्ट मेड फ्रॉम द कर्ड ऑप्टेन फ्रॉम मिल्क बाय कोयागुलेटिंग द केसिन विद द हेल्प ऑफ रेनेट और सिमिलर एंजाइम्स इन द प्रेजेंस ऑफ लैक्टिक एसिड प्रोड्यूस बाय एडेड और एडवेंचरस माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिजम्स फ्रॉम विच पार्ट ऑफ द मॉइस्चर हैज बीन रिमूव बाय कटिंग कुकिंग एंड और प्रेसिंग which has been shaped in a mold and then ripened by holding it for some time at suitable temperature and humidities food and nutritive value of cheese cheese has high food and nutritive value it it has an excellent source of milk proteins a rich source of calcium and phosphorus an excellent source for several fat soluble vitamins such as vitamin a d e and k a concentrator for of energy cheddar cheese gives about 400 calories per 100 g it is both palatable and digestible there is no practically waste so now we will study the method of manufacturing of cheddar cheese in detail so this is the process flow chart or flow diagram of manufacturing of cheddar cheese every unit operation involved in the manufacture of cheddar cheese we will see in detail the first unit operation is receiving milk so it is well known that only high grade milk can yield high grade cheese the quality of finished cheese depends upon the initial quality of the milk from which it is made cheese is no better than the milk from which it is made the milk grader in a cheese factory has to perform his task continue consistently from day to day so the after receiving milk the next unit operation is preheating preheating of the received milk is done at a temperature of 35 to 40 degree celsius also after preheating filtration and or clarification of the milk takes place the chief object of this step is to remove any visible dirt in milk so as to improve the aesthetic quality of the cheese made the milk is usually preheated to 35 to 40 degrees celsius for efficient filtration and clarification so the purpose of preheating at the temperature of 35 degrees celsius to 40 degrees celsius is to facilitate the filtration or clarification process of the milk so after filtration process standardization of the milk takes place so in cheese making standardization refers to adjustment of the casein fat ratio in cheese milk to 0.68 to 0.70 the object of the objects of standardization are to regulate the fat in the dry matter of cheese the second objective objective is 
टू प्रोड्यूस द मैक्सिमम अमाउंट ऑफ चीज पर के जी ऑफ फैट इन चीज मिल्क सो स्टैंडर्डाइजेशन शुड आइदर बी डन करेक्टली और अवॉइडेड ऑल टूगेदर सो आफ्टर स्टैंडर्डाइजेशन द मिल्क इज सब्जेक्टेड टू ए पास्चराइजेशन सो इन एवरी प्रोडक्ट मैन्युफैक्चरिंग प्रोसेस वी हैव डिस्कस पास्चराइजेशन इन वेरी डिटेल द यूजल टेम्परेचर टाइम एम्प्लॉयड फॉर पास्चराइजेशन ऑफ चीज मिल्क इज होल्डर दैट इज बैच मेथड इन विच मिल एवरी पार्टिकल ऑफ मिल्क इज हीटेड एट ए टेम्परेचर ऑफ सिक्सटी थ्री डिग्री सेल्सियस एंड हेल्ड एट द टेम्परेचर फॉर थर्टी मिनट्स इन कॉन्टिन्यूस सिस्टम दैट इज इन एस टी एस टी पास्चराइजर सेवेंटी डिग्री सेल्सियस एंड फिफ्टी सेकेंड्स इज द टेम्परेचर टाइम कॉम्बिनेशन इज मेंटेन द ऑब्जेक्ट ऑफ पास्चराइजेशन आर to destroy all pathogens to destroy fault producing micro organisms to produce a more uniform product of high quality to increase the yield also along there are also some limitations of this pasteurization process the chief limitations of pasteurization are it destroys the typical flavor and body of cheese it entails a longer ripening period it encourages the use of low quality milk it increases the overall cost of the cheese making so after pasteurization the unit operation is at adding starter or ripening which is done at a temperature of 31 degree celsius ripening or souring of milk refers to the development of acidity in milk from the time it is received in the cheese after that that until the renating in cheese milk ripening is done by the addition of starter the starter is the heart of cheese a bad starter is almost certain to give low quality cheese a good starter may make up for other defects such as contaminated milk there are different kinds of cheese starters such as those producing acids aroma special effects such as eyes etc so the usual time to add the starter is before all the milk has been received in the vat the amount of starter added is to the extent of 0.5 to 1% of the milk and the temperature of addition is 30 to 31 degree celsius so after adding starter or after the ripening process the addition of color is done in adding color in our operation when color is used it is added just before renating the usual amount is 30 to 200 ml or more for buffalo milk for 1000 kg milk the color is diluted with approximately 20 times its volume of potable water for a one distribution it is vigorously agitated to ensure uniform and rapid distribution the color of cheese is usually an alkaline solution of anatto renate and color should not be mixed together before being added to the milk after adding color then adding renate that is also called as renating is done which is done at a temperature of 31 degree celsius so renating means adding renate to milk in cheese making in commonly known as renating or setting so what do you mean by renate so it is the crude preparation or extract from the albumism 
Renate contains two principal enzymes that is renin and pepsin. Renin is an extremely powerful clotting enzyme which cause rapid clotting without much proteolysis. On the other hand, pepsin induces proteolysis leading to bitterness in cheese. Renate is available as a liquid or powder or as a tablets. So, how the renate is prepared? Renate is the preparation obtained commonly or commercially from the fourth or true stomach abomasum of the young calf known as the whale. The lining of the stomach is washed, dried, cut into small pieces and macerated into water containing about 4% boric acid at 30 degrees Celsius for 5 days. Milk fed calves yield the purest renate. Alternatively, a brine extract at 15 to 20 degrees Celsius may be prepared. A common method is to dry the whales by inflation and afterwards cut them into strips and extract with brine. So, after renating, coagulation or setting is done. So, coagulation. This refers to, li to liquid milk changing to a semi-solid junket. The first sign of coagulation are that bubbles of air stirred into the milk surface take longer to break and spatula dipped into the milk and withdrawn shows small flakes of cords. After coagulation or sitting, Cutting unit operation is done. So this refers to the cutting of the fur coagulum into cubes of a specific size. So now when to cut where? When to cut curd? When a sanitized glass rod inserted at a 45 angle, 45 degree angle and lifted straight up makes a clean break in the curd, it is ready for cutting. If the curd is cut too soon, there will be a lower yield of cheese. If cut too late, cutting will be difficult and moisture expulsion delayed. So after cutting, the unit operation done is cooking. So this refers to the heating of curd cubes. It begins within 15 minutes of cutting and it is done or cooking is performed at a temperature range between 37 to 39 degree Celsius. So after cook, cooking, the drainage of whey or dipping takes place. So this refers to the removal of whey from the curd. When the curd cubes have been reduced to about one half of their size at cutting, the acidity approaches desirable limit and the cubes attain a desirable consistency that is elastic feel when squeezed. Stirring is stopped and the cubes are pitched. Pitching refers to the curd cubes being dropped to the bottom of the vat and piling them up together. The curd cubes are pushed away from the gate of the vat. A strainer in, inserted in the gate. A curd pail, pail is hung on the curd outlet and the whey is drawn from the vat. In actual practice, especially with large vat, it is desirable to remove one half of the whey before the curd is quite ready so as to make quick removal of the remaining whey possible at the proper time. So after that the cheddaring is done. So this is the name given to the cheese. This is the most important step. So this cheddaring refers to the combined operation of packing, turning, piling and repiling the curd cubes. So packing. 
After the bulk drainage of hay, the curd tubes are kept closely together in two heaps with a channel in between them. This is known as packing and takes 5 to 15 minutes after dipping. It results in the formation of two long slabs of curd. These are cut with a cheese knife into block or strips 15 to 20 cm wide. So after packing, turning is done. As soon as the blocks or strips of curd can be handled without breaking, they are rolled bottom side up in the hat. This is called turning and is carried out every 15 minutes till the curd is ready for milling and salting. It is important to note that the vat is kept covered and the temperature of the curd maintained at about 32 degrees Celsius. So the next step in cheddaring is piling and repiling. So within 30 to 45 minutes of packing, blocks of curd are turned and laid on over another, one over another in twos or threes. This is called piling. Then the position of the curd blocks is altered and this is known as ripening. So, so these are the steps which takes place in the cheddaring. So after cheddaring, milling is done. So milling refers to the mechanical operation of cutting the blocks of cheddar curd into small pieces with the help of a cheese mill. So objects of milling are to promote the further removal of whey, to enable quick distribution of salt in the curd, to prepare curd for pressing into final form. Other benefits include deodorization, cooling of curd, through more rinsing if needed and making cheese more uniform in composition. So after milling, salting is done. This refers to the addition of common salt to the curd pieces. Salt in cheese affects flavor, body and texture and keeping quality. Cheeses without salt are soft, ripen quickly and rapidly develop unpleasant flavor. So objects of salting are the further removal of whey. The second object is hardening and shrinking of curd, then retarding further formation of lactic acid, then checking undesirable fermentation, producing desirable quality characteristics. So after salting, the hooping operation is done. So, hooping refers to the curd being placed in hoops or molds in which the cheese curd is pressed into its final shape. So, there is, condition, the, there is a first condition of curd at hooping. The salt should have dissolved completely and the curd should feel mellow and silky. In the second stand, temperature at hooping should be 30 to 32 degrees Celsius, hooping and pressing at too high a temperature cause an excessive loss of fat, decrease yield, development of abnormal flavors and exaggeration of bacterial defects. On the other hand, hooping and pressing at too low a temperature results in, in an open texture, imperfect rind formation and lack of a drainage. So after Hooping a dressing is done. Dressing refers to the arrangement of the cheese cloth before and after pressing. So first before pressing, large cheese hoops are lined with cloth before they are filled with cheese curd for pressing. Small hoops are filled with curd and pressed for 30 to 60 minutes without any cloth. A cloth is necessary to form a closed rind or surface. The hoops are carefully lined with cloth in order to produce a smooth surface in the finished cheese. So the second is after first pressing. To remove all wrinkles from during pressing. So 
after this dressing the next unit operation is drying so this is done for rind formation in cheese it involves the steps like taking the cheese out of the hoop care is taken to see that the cheese removed from the hoop is neat clean uniform in size and regular in shape also drying is done to do the stamping the cheese the date batch number variety name etc are stamped on the cheese for identification and record so third purpose of drying is keeping cheese in a drying room where the temperature is maintained at 12 to 16 degrees celsius and the average relative humidity at 50 percent for a few days the cheese is turned at 24 hour intervals so they had both ends and sides of the cheese can dry and form the desired rind note should be taken that mold control in the drying room is important so after drying paraffining unit operation is done this refers to the operation of dipping the cheese for a few seconds in a bath of melted paraffin whereby a thin coating of a paraffin is applied to the surface of the cheese so objective of paraffining is to reduce loss of moisture during curing to prevent extensive mold growth that is paraffin however you are not mold proof to protect it against insects as long as the cheese is free from cracks so after paraffining cutting or maturing is done so it is the cheese is then cut into a required cubes then so in this curing cutting or maturing process of cheese refers to the storage of cheese for at least 2 to 3 months at a given low temperature of 0 to 16 degree celsius during which its physical chemical and bacteriological properties are profoundly changed resulting in the development of a characteristic flavor body and texture so the term green cheese is usually applied to hard pressed cheese in the early stages of ripening before the characteristic flavor body and texture of ripening cheese have developed so in this way in very detail we have discussed the process flow diagram of manufacturing of cheddar cheese so thank you so in this way in five subsequent video lectures we have covered the process flow charts of various dairy products in very detail thank you